what's happening, cats. I got the old wood burner cranked up. Temperature took a nosedive today, big time. Yeah, it's cold. It was snowing a little bit today. Not much. It started out raining this morning, and the temperature was kind of mild, I would guess. But by uh, within an hour or two, the temperatures went down and the snow came on. So this evening, we have a beautiful pastel sunset coming on here. Love the sunsets. But I'm going to go in and get comfortable. Nice and cozy up here. You know, we sit up here in the loft and the heat comes up. Now, I do have a ceiling fan over there. And that pushes the hot air, circulates it through the rest of the house. But still, it's always like a few degrees warmer up here. Which is fine with me, because in the winter, when it's cold out, I can sit back here and be nice and cozy. So, two and a half weeks has gone by, and it's kind of gone by quick. The holidays went really good. I spent a lot of time with my kids, and uh, I had a birthday this week. Uh, again, my kids were very gracious to me. Uh, we had a good, my son. Uh, <laughs> smoked some pork a pork butt and uh, oh man it came out so good so uh, that was my birthday treat <laughs> and a good one at that uh, to spend time with my kids my grandchildren uh, had a wonderful time I, I just wish that V was here to share it with me I've got so many letters and cards and uh, and just wonderful uh, messages uh, coming coming through that uh, are very supportive of me. I had phone calls uh, where where people have just uh, get uplifted my spirit, and and that's it's very necessary when you lose somebody that close to you. You know to have that support, to have people around that that care enough. Uh, so that that's been good. You know, and some people have said, you know, hey, you need to just pack up and take a trip. Go, go do something. Go, go, go somewhere. Get on the bike and go. And, uh, you know, that, that'll probably happen. Um, I'm not just going to run off tomorrow, mind you. I've, I've still got a lot of responsibilities to handle here. Um, it's going to be a, a big adjustment for me to get used to living a, a life as a single man here this place is beautiful I mean there's no neighbors you don't hear the the sound of dogs barking or kids yelling or or you know cars zipping up and down the street it, it's relatively quiet back here but that quietness can kind of bring on some real loneliness too if you know what I mean Anyway, it, I will get out. I will get out. I will travel. And, uh, you know, I've got a couple places in mind. Uh, I was remembering back, though, to one of my favorite trips with V uh, before she got sick. And we went to visit my brother in Lone Pine, California. Now, Lone Pine is just this little, like, western town. Um not a huge tourist attraction but it is a, an attraction to people that pass through there there's some uh it's just kind of a neat little place it's just a friendly little little western town it sits in the owens valley though right between the inyo mountains and the sierra mountain range in fact right there by lone pine is mount whitney the, the highest mountain in the u.s is right there you can see it from Lone Pine. And uh, my brother lives right there in Lone Pine. So V and I were going to go visit. So what you have to do initially is fly into Las Vegas. And then you have quite a little bit of a drive to get to Lone Pine from Las Vegas. Because from Vegas you have to go through Death Valley to get to Lone Pine. 
So we flew into Vegas. I had never been to Vegas before. I'm sure a lot of you have been to Las Vegas. And it was a real eye-opener for me. We stayed at the Luxor. The Luxor is the, the, the uh, resort that looks like a big pyramid. I mean, it, it is a pyramid. And at night, the light shines out of the top of the thing. Uh, it, it's a neat place. But, you know, if you've, if you've been there to Vegas any time recently, you'll notice some of these resorts are showing their age. You know, they've been there for a long time. And uh, it, it, some of them, it's time for a rebuild, a redo, you know. But uh, the Luxor is still there. It's showing some age. But we stayed there. And the first night, we just decided to go for a little walk. Um, we probably didn't walk more than a mile, you know, a half mile out. And uh, just to where we could see the strip and see the lights and everything. And then we turned around and came back. But the next day, she wanted to show me the strip. Val was pretty excited about Las Vegas because she had been there and she was really excited to show me. Now neither of us are gamblers so we weren't about to be wasting money in slot machines or anything like that. We were just there to see the sights and uh, <laughs> drinking as much of it as we can. So we walked that day three miles up the strip. Well, you know, when you walk three miles one way, you gotta turn around three miles back. Well, we did six miles that day round trip. Up one side of the strip, turn on back down the other side of the strip. And there was a lot to see. It's just an amazing place. Uh, like nothing you've ever seen before. But one thing about Vegas, you gotta know that everybody's out for a dollar. Everybody wants to take, a, take money out of your pocket. And so you'll pass these people that appear to be friendly. They'll be like, hey, how are you doing today? How are you enjoying Las Vegas? Well, the worst thing you can do is make eye contact with them and reply. Because what it is, it's just a trap they're setting to lure you in. Lady uh, tells V, she says, hey, I've got some neat stuff here that takes wrinkles out from under your eyes. Would you like to try it? I, I can put it on you. It'll only take a minute. And V goes, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, come on in, you know, and, and we walk into her shop. She puts V in one of these salon chairs, and she starts putting this stuff under her eyes. How does that feel? How does that look? Here, look in the mirror. Oh, look, your wrinkles are already starting to go away. Um, you know, it does something to the skin where it tightens up the skin. And I, it's no miracle medicine, but it, it actually does do something. And... Uh, so we're like, yeah, okay, well, that's pretty cool. Um, <coughs> she says, uh, well, I've got a package here of, of this stuff that you can buy today for only $500. What? No. You know, well, now they got you there. They got you in the chair. And they got, she got her tip bag, got her hair pulled back, and they're putting stuff on her eyes, and they're telling her that they want $500 for this stuff. The best thing you can do is just keep walking. We learned that real quick. That night, she wanted to take me to Fremont Street, which the old is the old part of Vegas. And uh, when you walk down Fremont, Fremont Street, it, it's covered. You know, there, it's like a mall. Like there's a, a roof over your head, and the whole ceiling is like a video screen of things, like clouds going by or fighter jets flying over your head. It's it's all like a really long street long video. And uh, and then the sights that you see there are like, I would say a little heathenistic, you know. I mean, you see people there dancing around in their, almost in their full glory. I never saw anything that crazy before, let me put it that way. And V, she was just, she thought that was just hilarious that, that you know, I, I was like uh, the country boy in the big city. And, and she giggled the whole way down there. Every time I saw a different sight, I'd be like, whoa, you know, and she just thought that was so funny. Uh, we rented a car, we drove then, we drove through Death Valley. Death Valley is huge, huge. When you think you're in Death Valley, no, you're not there yet. Uh, <laughs> you keep going and it keeps getting hotter. Uh, you, you know, you, you drop further and further down into the valley itself. I remember as we were driving, you could see these dust devils. I don't know if you ever saw a dust devil, but they're like they're like tornadoes of dirt. And these things were off in the distance, so you could see three of them. 
and they were moving across the the desert in front of us and just like in slow motion and, and they towered clear up to the clouds i mean just just huge enormous dust devils and you you, you think you're going to catch up to them but they're so far away you you never really do I think that day the hottest it got was like 100 and 113 or something like that. Uh, and uh, then you come up out of Death Valley. You come up over the Inyo Mountains, down the other side, and there's Lone Pine. And we had a good time in Lone Pine too. My brother is a rock hounder, so he would take us out in his uh, Toyota 4Runner four-wheel drive up into the mountains and he knew where all the places were where you could find gems minerals uh crystals yeah cool things and and so we would go up and he'd park the truck and we'd get out and then we just go off hounding for looking for uh crystals or looking for rocks and and cool things so oh and then we had the one experience where we were way out in the middle of nowhere and his forerunner broke down on us yeah that was another story in itself you can watch that video it's 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 up there somewhere and we just thought that was the greatest experience in the world although between the three of us we had like one bottle of water with maybe about a third of the water in there like maybe about that deep and it was like warm and that that was all we had between the three of us and so uh kind of foolish of us to be out in the desert unprepared but uh boy what a time that was what an what a vacation what an experience that was but uh hey it's time for a brand new adventure now i know v's on an adventure of her own she's dancing in the light you know i've been reading a book here about people that have had near near death experiences you know where they died they were they were pronounced dead and they came back to life and when they came back to life they always tell the story about how they went to heaven and it's interesting because there's thousands and thousands of people that have experienced this and their stories are all relatively the same their their accounts vary a little bit here and there but one of the things they always talk about is they're they're going towards this bright light brighter than anything you've ever seen before in your life and and the thing about this light is that it's overpoweringly evident of love like indescribable that no one can ever humanly describe and uh, in that sense they also say that the light is the Lord Jesus you know we read about the light <laughs> he's the light of the world you know he's he is the light and I just, that, that, that gives me joy in my soul to know that she's there in, in a brand new place that, uh, where she's inconceivably happier than anything we can even imagine. So with that being said, cats, I'm going to let you go today. Uh, I got a couple more things to wrap up here. But I'm going to go out and take another look at that sunset. So, till next time, ride hard and die free.